Uh, the title of this talk is called Stop Dragging My Heart Around Meditation on Libraries, Library Work, and Kindness. One of the reasons it's titled this is because Stevie Nicks' first album in 10 years comes out tomorrow. Uh, please grab that off of your favorite online or big box record retailer. Stop dragging my heart around. Uh, I wrote in Library Journal a couple columns ago that I believe librarianship is the ultimate ultimate service profession and I think a lot of us are drawn to this profession because we're drawn to service and we're drawn to the idea of helping people and we're drawn to the idea that we're making a difference and in this slide if you are following along is called have a heart uh, and I think that's how we found our way uh, to libraries and I don't mean just people that got a master's degree in library science or whatever but I mean everyone that has found their way uh, into libraries the stop dragging my heart around part it comes in when I start thinking about what I've seen in libraries, almost, it's been 20 years that I've been working in libraries this, this summer, uh, this, this sort of overemphasis on policy and rules and uh, some of the things that Jamie mentioned with the no smoking sign, and if you've seen me talk, you've seen me show off these signs from all over the world of really poor ways that we speak to our users through our signage in, library, in libraries. Uh, at the end of the slides, there's some resources. There's a post I did uh, called Save the Web, the Web that tells some stories like uh, a young person needs the last book in the entire library for the book group, and it's the one that the head of something is keeping back on her desk, and she will not let the young librarian give it to the, uh, uh, the, the teen that needs it. It seems to some degree, and I don't want to make sweeping generalizations, that this whole concept of con command and control uh, it kind of plays itself out in our signage. It plays itself out sometimes in uh, organizations that refuse to be transparent. Michael Casey and I wrote about the Transparent Library for a couple years in LJ, and uh, I think we could have some really interesting conversations about that. Uh, and I think something happened to us as a profession. I really don't know what it is, and this slide is called Harden My Heart, and it kind of hurts me to even say that. What you're looking at, but you, if you're not seeing it, that's okay too. It's a picture of a pencil sharpener with a beautiful label on it that says Denise. I was at a, uh, a sort of a consulting gig with a group of librarians, library users, and different important people from community, and we needed a pencil sharpener. And we requested one, and I guess the only one they, they could find was Denise's. And she was so concerned about her pencil sharpener that she had her name put on it before it was brought into the room. Yes, that's absolutely right, uh, at any rate. And I've seen this more than once, and I don't mean to pick on Denise, and I will never tell anybody where Denise is from, but I've seen this happen in all the libraries, not all the libraries, but many of the libraries I've visited with this, sort of this territorial, this is my stuff kind of thing. Uh, it's just, it concerns me. And do I see my slides actually coming up there? That's kind of cool. Hopefully, now I can't, okay, if you can't hear me, <laughs> Somebody will come and tell me because my screen just went, just totally froze. There's Denise's, okay. So what scares me, and Pete, if you'll go on to the next slide, if you can, what scares me is this really is a heart of glass situation. This relationship with our users, really, it seems like it could be easily broken. And I know libraries are being used a lot right now, and we have statistics for that, but we also have statistics that say people are not turning to librarians for information. And we have statistics that uh, talk about various other, other services we might provide that might not be, using, be used as much. So uh, it does concern me that this is sort of a fragile thing. Uh, the next slide, gets me thinking that what, what, could be, uh, what could be the powder keg? What could be the thing that destroys a library? Could it be a loss of community support because uh, they sort of went too far down this road? Uh, could it be disinterest by the public in what the library does as, as they find other third places to go to? Uh, could it come in a lack of funding of, uh, of monetary uh, provision that could cause the library to close. I really believe in, uh, the, in the future, the best libraries will be around and the crummy ones will close. And it will not be surprising when any town USA no longer has a library because that library never reached out to its users the way that it should. I'm going to 
to go on to the next slide. This one is, is entitled um, Peace of My Heart. Now the same thing, and I'm hurtling toward making my point here, and I think I'm talking too much. Uh, the same, we have a relationship with our users going on, but we also have this, this sort of online and at conferences and in the profession relationship with each other. And I think it's more pronounced right now online. Uh, in 2005, I did the beginnings of my dissertation research and talked to 237 librarian bloggers about why they blogged. And that was really interesting and, and it sort of painted this picture of participating in community and sharing, et cetera. Uh, it's a place where we could share and we could discuss and we could debate. And I have encouraged for a long time librarians to put themselves mm -hmm. out there, to participate in what uh, Kyle Jones, uh, a young man I've been writing with, uh, who's getting his doctorate right now, uh, what we call the profession commons. And that's that area that we're, we're actually moving in right now, the Twitter, the blog, the Facebook, whatever you uh, put in there under sort of social sharing. But what, what's kind of upset me lately, and please go on to the next slide, and I think that's Pete doing that, and Pete, I really appreciate it. Uh, what has kind of struck me lately, and it's kind of broken my heart a little bit, is that things have gotten kind of not so nice and not so kind uh, when somebody does put themselves out there. And I think uh, we, we could come up with some examples of some of the people that have been, been talking or will be talking today. Uh, it seems like if you put an idea out, if you're thinking, if you're sort of exploring ideas, and one wrong thing is said, that there might be people that come along and, and attack you. And that kind of concerns me a little bit, and it kind of makes me uncomfortable, and it kind of makes me not want to participate as much as I used to. Uh, I think we should really look to, to be charitable to people because this is a way I think that we can, we can learn and we can sort of figure out our ideas. I think we should really cut people a lot of slack. I think we're still trying to understand how these tools work as well. Uh, practicing the benefit of the doubt, uh, charitable reading I think would, would be really, really good things uh, to do. So, and please uh, go on uh, to the next slide for our viewers at home. Uh, in a nutshell, I really think the heart of the matter is remembering that focus on the heart and remembering that we should encourage the heart and remembering that very, very simple concept that probably I hope we learned on the playground of kindness. And I mean both for treating our users, the people that come into our doors, uh, and look around for the copier and want to use the quiet study tape because that does look so comfortable, we need to remember to be kind to them and work with them because that's why we're there. Remember, the ultimate service profession. And I also think we need to, to be kind to each other because this is a big deal. We're in, all, we're in this together and you, know, you don't get into this job to make a million dollars. So hopefully, you're working with people you like and people that aren't mean to you, <laughs> I would hope. So uh, respect and kindness, incredibly important. Uh, Lawrence Clark Powell uh, wrote, uh, and I can't give you a good citation for this, it's, it's on Tame the Web. A good librarian is not a social scientist, a documentalist, a retrievalist, or an automaton. A good librarian is a librarian, a person with good health and warm heart, trained by study and seasoned by experience to catalyze books and people. Now, he might say, to catalyze information in people, and I say to catalyze communities in people and bring them together around information. Uh, take a look at the next slide. I think we should move into a time of reflective practice, uh, balanced with that focus on the heart that is so important, uh, where we're an adv advocates for what we believe for those foundational values that are so important, and everything we do, everything we do, should have a humanistic approach. And I promise, in the teaching I do, I promise to you, that will be my first thing. I would urge any other library school professors participating today to bring humanism to your teaching as well. And for those of you deep in the trenches, deep in professional practice, please um, think about that. Think about that humanistic approach as we go forward. So how do we be user-centered? How do we kind of turn this around? Go on to the next slide if you can. This is going to be a little quick, so just run through them or do, do whatever uh, you can. Uh, how can we be more user-centered? For sure, uh, and Jamie said some really good things. We put them at, in the middle of everything we do. 
Uh, I think we should focus on things like play. That's the next slide. Uh, the concept of having fun. Uh, I one of my best, best supervisors, one of my mentors from my time in the public library, and this is probably 10 or 15 years ago, she, she used to say after like one of those really crazy meetings, she would say, this is not the Pentagon, this is not brain surgery, this is the library. You know, let's get a grip. Uh, I think we should look for ways to play. Next slide is the uh, have fun slide. Uh, and look for ways uh, to, to be human and to show that human side. And sometimes uh, it's very easy to put on that, that sort of facade that I'm online and this is me and I'm, I'm sure I'm do it myself, uh, but to, to try to let the humanity come through. Uh, the next slide, be kind. One of the best things I ever heard uh, at a conference was we need to remember to bring our hearts with us. I think I will uh, urge you all uh, to do that, to figure out a way that you can bring your heart to your library work, that you can bring your heart to your blogging or your tweeting or your Facebooking or whatever social network you're participating in. Uh, and uh, I would ask you to let the heart drive the changes that we're talking about today and that I'm very, uh, very excited to be a part of this day. So please let the heart uh, drive change and remember that everything we do should encourage the heart. And I am really glad to have been with you all today. Thank you.